Number 10. Age of X Avengers. In the Age of X storyline, the mutant population were feared, and after a phoenix shaped explosion leveled Albany, the culling of the mutants began. In response to this, the mutant Magneto used his powers to literally steal several buildings from New York and form Fortress X, a safe haven for mutant kind. This led to the creation of a team of non mutant heroes by General Frank Castle and led by Captain America to hunt down this resistance of mutants. The team was made up of Captain America, Ghost Rider, who was killed prior to the actual assault on Fortress X, the Hulk, Invisible Woman, Redback, who is this universe's Jessica Drew, and Iron Man slash Steel Corpse. While the team murdered a lot of mutants, Cap eventually called them off to instead defend the mutants, which activated Steel Corpse's Code Omega, causing them to take him out. There was also Plan B, which was the two megaton chemical that was carried by the Hulk. Luckily, the mutant population survived this twisted Avenger team. Number 9, Ultimate Avengers. Not to be confused with the Ultimates, who are very much their own thing. This team of Avengers is actually called the Avengers, but is not the Avengers equivalent from the 1610 Ultimate Universe. Are you confused yet? Basically, in the Ultimate Universe, the Avengers team that we know and love from 616 is a little different, including in name. On Earth 1610, the Earth's mightiest heroes go by the name of the Ultimates and are pretty buddy buddy with S.H.I.E.L.D. and its director, Nick Fury. However, there is a team in this universe that uses the Avengers moniker, but they are quite different from the Avengers we know from Earth 616. On 1610, the Avengers team is more like DC's Suicide Squad. The team is made up of characters who are seen as more disposable by S.H.I.E.L.D and who are more anti-heroes or just straight up villains. They are a black ops team who is usually brought on for less mm, publicly marketable missions and jobs. Number 8. Deathlock Nation On Earth 11045, the superhumans grew out of control. They began to take the law into their own hands more and more, acting as judge, jury, and executioner. This led to popular support from the people for Operation Deathlock. Operation Deathlock was a plan conceived by Weapon Infinity of the Weapons Plus breeding facility called the world to convert all superhumans into deathlocks. The project began small with a few normal human deathlocks, and then those deathlocks targeted specific heroes who were killed and then converted into super deathlocks. No hero could stand for long, and soon all superheroes were converted into mindless police robots, which actually resulted in a utopia. Eventually, these deathlocks began spreading into other timelines and realities, only to be stopped by apocalypse. This eventually led a team composed of deathlock Captain America. Cyclops, Spider-Man, Elektra, Hawkeye, and The Thing to come into conflict with Earth-616. Number 7. Cadaverous' Avengers Cadaverous' Avengers were part machine, part man, and all influenced by the villainous Cadaverous. They show up in whatever alternate world J.J. Abrams and his son Henry Abrams' Spider-Man series is relegated to. I don't think it has an official number yet. It does have a temporary reality number though. This team seemed hell-bent on getting revenge on Iron Man. The only surviving Avenger left in this world. Well, I guess Peter was still alive at this point, and I mean, he's normally a part of the Avengers team, at least at some point, but I mean, in terms of the standard Avengers cast, we've all come to familiarize ourselves with through various forms of media, including the films. I mean, especially the films in this case, just based on the roster. These villainous corpse versions of the former heroes face off against the old Iron Man, Iron Heart, Spider-Man's son, Ben Parker, and his powerless but enthusiastic friend and love interest, Faye Ito, or is it Ito Faye? Needless to say, these evil counterparts at least weren't in control of themselves, but instead were being influenced by Cadaverous to fight against their former friend and colleague with the use of old Stark Tech neurochips. Number six. The Gatherers. The Gatherers are a team of former Avengers of different alternate realities who survived their world's destruction, tricked by an alternate reality Black Knight named Proctor into believing that their world's Circes were to blame. Proctor united them together and gave them a single enemy, the Circe of Earth 616. The team consisted of alternate reality versions of Proctor, Rick Jones, The Thing or Korg, Swordsman, Black Panther, and The Vision as well as some unknown original villains. But for them to carry out their vengeance, each member had to kill their Earth-616 counterpart within a certain amount of time, or they would die from cellular breakdown. What the members of the Gatherers did not know is that their leader, Proctor, was responsible for the destruction of each world they are from, as he drove that world Circe into madness, causing her to lash out and destroy everything around her, all because of a bad breakup. Damn, dude! 
Number 5. Android Ultimates The Android Ultimates come from Ultimates 3. They make their first appearance in issue number 4 of the Ultimates 3 series. This is where we first learn that these Ultimates aren't really the Ultimates at all, but replacements built by Ultron to act just like them. His plan is to use the team of robotic hero impersonators to destroy man and help the machines of the world rise up. Really all machines too. There's a weird part where they're talking about like, we as machines are just seen as these tools. Us toasters, we will unite! <laughs> It's like very strange. Of course, the Ultimates themselves will have a few things to say about that whole plan. Ultron styles himself after his father, Ant-Man, but he and his team wouldn't make it past the next issue. It would later be revealed that their leader, Ultron, wasn't actually fully in control, but instead was being puppeted by Doctor Doom. So many reveals where people are actually being controlled by someone else. Number 4. Undead Avengers The living are not welcome on Earth-666, and the world is only consisting purely of the dead. Undead or supernatural beings. Vampires, werewolves, mummies, and more all exist here, and each group is divided into separate factions. But don't fear, the greatest heroes from across these groups are assembled together to protect this world. They are the Undead Avengers. This team is so cool. A Captain America who never recovered from being a werewolf, a part spider Natasha Romanoff, a devil daredevil, a mummified Thor the Accursed who wields the backwards Mjolnir that casts black anti-magic energy, vampire Wolverine, where Hawkeye, Franken Castle? I mean, come on. These guys come into conflict with Captain Britain when trying to defend the orb of necromancy in order for them to spread undeath across all of reality. And they first appear in Secret Avengers number 33. Number 3, Dark Avengers. The Dark Avengers technically hail from Earth 616, but they are a completely alternate team when it comes to their roster and in general their backstory and motives. Well, that is in a way, the Dark Avengers do attempt to do good, but they are just all approaching it from a more villainous side. And many of the team members don't do good for the sake of doing good, but have their own ulterior motives. So can we really call that good? Oh, that's a philosophical question for you. The Dark Avengers were introduced when Norman Osborn was given reign over the heroic team after he'd been declared a hero for killing the Skrull Queen, Varonki. Aside from getting to build his own Avengers team, which would replace the previous one, S.H.I.E.L.D. had been disbanded and Osborn was allowed to create his own organization organization to replace it, using the acronym HAMMER, which really doesn't stand for anything. Osborne just thought it sounded cool, so that's not really an acronym, it's just capitalized letters at that point. He pulled together his own Avengers team, which publication-wise became known as the Dark Avengers, composed of various Marvel villains, anti-heroes, and misled heroes in some cases, or heroes who were just like really lost at the time, who Osborne united when the standard Avengers hero members refused to join his team. He did try though. <laughs> he was like, hey, Carol, come be on this team. She was like, uh, hell no. <laughs> Number two. Zombie Galacti. I think most of us are familiar with Earth 2149, which is the home of the Marvel Zombie storyline. Here, a separate reality zombie infected sentry was sent by his Earth's Watcher. The Avengers were the first on the scene and quickly died or were infected, with the rest of the population falling quickly afterwards. Once the Herald of Galactus, the Silver Surfer, showed up to announce the arrival of Galactus, he was consumed by Hulk. Wolverine, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Giant Man, Power Man, and Captain America, who absorbed his powers and used it to toast other zombies to improve their flavor. Gordon Ramsay would not approve. The zombie Galacti used the machine to unite their power cosmic to take down Galactus and, after fighting their zombie villains, consumed and absorbed his power too, using it to spread the infection throughout the whole of their universe. Number 1. Revengers The Cancerverse Avengers, known as the Revengers, hail from a reality where the world was turned upside down by the fact that death was defeated. I know, how can you kill death? Well apparently when you make deals with elder god like beings, any Anything is possible, like what happened here. In a bid to save Captain Marvel from life-threatening cancer, a deal was struck with the many angled ones. As a result, death ended up dead, which actually resulted in the whole universe becoming a perverted version of itself. You'd think without death around, the universe would become like a paradise, but no. It became rank with disease that spread and basically couldn't die, becoming known as the Cancerverse. All the heroes who remained here were made to serve the many angled ones, becoming their loyal servants and attempting to invade other universes eventually and conquer them in the name of their Lovecraftian horror-esque gods, Avengers included, or Revengers included. Number 10, Silverclaw. 
Maria Santiago, aka Silverclaw, was born near the village of Kamakiri in South America. And this village was filled with simple folk whose ancestors worshipped the ancient gods until the arrival of the Spaniards. Her father was a native of the village who was constantly ridiculed for his beliefs. And his daughter was no different as she was ridiculed for, well, different reasons. You've heard of werewolves, right? Well, Maria had the interesting ability to transform into a variety of were forms, including jaguar, anaconda, cockatoo, monkey, sloth, and cheetah. And they were unfortunately uncontrollable for a while, which was not too great to say the least because it scared a lot of people. Now fast forward a bit and we see Silverclaw join the Avengers during the Civil War arc. And in this arc she fought Captain Marvel, who was attempting to get her to sign the Superhuman Registration Act. Silverclaw was pretty against the SHRA as it was not the law in her country and she was not a US citizen. Now as a result, a pitch battle between the two occurred with Silverclaw able to just so close evade arrest. After Captain America's assassination, she did voluntarily surrender and was registered as a US citizen. Now why is she so useless? Well, because she's not only just a bit lame of a character, but she didn't really do anything of worth that landed her a permanent position on the Avengers team. Now I do like her power though, I can't lie. Number 9, Swordsman. Okay, so I'll give you that Swordsman was at least talented in his art form, but at the end of the day, he's just a guy with good sword skills. You might be thinking, who are you going to rag on next, Amanda? Clint Barton? You also might be thinking, Amanda, wow, did you just use the term rag? Are you from like the 1930s? I'm not. Though I should be, maybe. And no, I'm not going to insult Hawkeye by putting him on this list. While there are many other Avengers who are just humans with superpower like skill sets, Clint at least is also a super interesting character. Swordsman however remains quite dated, relegated to being a hero of the past. He might have been good with the sword, but that also wasn't enough to have him save himself and also save his true love Mantis at the same time. Tisk tisk. And sure, Swordsman may have returned as a cooler Katati version of himself, but let's not forget that this is technically a different character. As while his Katati version has all of Swordsman Jacques de Quesne's memories, he is still an entity separate from Swordsman and made more interesting by the fact that he is part of the alien Katati race, let's be honest. Number 8, Star Fox. Now originally named Eron and rechristened Eros at the age of 5, Star Fox is the son of two Eternals who has a pretty interesting power to say the least. Now what's that power you ask? Well he has the ability to manipulate the pleasure centers of the brain of any people within 25 feet of himself. This power emanates from him at all times and causes people to feel, well, good. And by concentrating just a little bit more he can provoke extremely pleasurable sensations and make a person highly aroused, euphoric, or totally sedated depending on what the situation calls for. Eros has spent most of his life fighting his power power hungry brother Thanos, and that's right, that Thanos. And honestly, you'd think that being related to one of the biggest and strongest bad guys in all of Marvel history would make you a pretty useful ally, but sadly you'd be wrong. The Avengers admitted him to their training program and gave him the name Star Fox, since they felt Eros was a little inappropriate for a code name. And he served the Avengers faithfully for several months, helping them vanquish enemies like the Wizard, Terminus, and Maelstrom. That being said though, when he first joined the Avengers, he intentionally failed to mention his ability. Needless to say, when they found out, he didn't last. Number 7, Two Gun Kid. Another human, Two Gun Kid is a western style hero. Sure, westerns are cool, but Two Gun Kid is basically just a cowboy. Take away his guns and his horse lightning and there ain't much there to work with. We aren't talking about the original Two Gun Kid either. The original Two Gun Kid was Clay Harder who first appeared in 1948 in Two Gun Kid issue number 1. This version of Two Gun Kid, Matt Hawk, would not appear until 1962 in issue 60 of the series. He doesn't have superpowers and he's literally from the 1870s, so he wouldn't be a very knowledgeable hero in the modern day. In fact, when he came to the modern day, he had Hawkeye show him around, became an honorary member of the Avengers, but then decided he missed his own time period, so returned home. Peace. Number 6, Demolition Man. Born and raised in Detroit, Dennis Dunphy idolized superheroes ever since a young age. After not getting drafted onto any professional football teams, which was kind of his dream as an adult, he was approached by an agent of the Power Broker and offered the chance to undergo a process to increase his physical strength to superhuman levels, hoping that this would increase his chances of becoming a professional football player. Obviously he agreed and had his strength boosted, but with his newfound power, he actually couldn't safely compete against any other regular athletes. Not too long after, Captain America took an interest in Power Broker Inc. because of one of its clients, the Super Patriot, and then soon after, Dunphy allied himself with Rogers, created a costume based on Daredevil and Wolverines, and captured Carl Malice, the head scientist. This unfortunately resulted in Dunphy's own capture though, and he was subjected to more tests, which resulted in a bit of a heart attack. Captain America thankfully saved him and nursed him back to health, and for a time, Dunphy acted as Steve's telephone hotline operator. When Cap reformed the Avengers, he gave D-Man a call, though one can't shake the feeling it was mostly out of sympathy. D-Man was quickly forgotten and lived a sad, sad life as a homeless person before resorting to villainy. Dennis is a very nice guy and hopefully he gets help, but he's really just not Avengers material. Should've stuck to being Steve's secretary, man. Number 5, 
Doombot. This is what happens when you let Hank Pym run the Avengers. In the series Avengers AI, Hank leads his own Avengers team. Who does he decide to put on it? Hmm, let's see. Doombot. Let's also acknowledge that this only happened because after one of the many battles against and defeats of Ultron, Hank decided keeping artificial intelligence as prisoners was bad, but he had no qualms with reprogramming them, which also seems morally ambiguous in my opinion. He also had no problem with putting tiny black holes inside them, which also seems very irresponsible. <laughs> True facts. Hank reprogrammed the Doombot to be loyal to him and made him a member of his artificially intelligent Avengers team, whose roster also included Victor, Mancha, and Protector. Yeah. Pim probably just shouldn't get to lead Avengers teams in my opinion. Certainly not AI ones either. He also created Ultron, so. Doombot wasn't completely useless as he was still a Doombot, but wasn't useful enough to be remembered. Sad face. After the AI Avengers disbanded, the rest of the Avengers lost track of him or didn't care to keep up and we didn't really see him again until he reappeared to help his teammate Victor Mancha find a new body in the 2017 Runaway series. Also you should read that cause it's really good. Number 4 Triathlon Delroy Garrett Jr. is a pretty exceptional human, I won't lie. I mean, he wound up making it into the Olympic Games and won a total of three gold medals. So obviously he's got some talent, right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but not really as he tested positive for steroids and was basically banned from sports for life after that. Turning to religion, Garrett ended up joining a cult that bestowed him with the powers of 3D man, which basically meant that he gained various superhuman physical attributes that are approximately three times greater than that of even the finest human athlete. Pretty much he gained the powers he got from steroids without the steroids. Captain America eventually recruited Triathlon for the Secret Avengers, a team that worked against the Superhuman Registration Act, but Triathlon kept pushing for the main Avengers to be just a little bit more diverse, and that landed him on a spot on the main team for a while. Now in all honesty, that's all he did for the Avengers, make them just that tiny bit more diverse, so kudos to him for that, but maybe try being a better hero next time. Number 3, Jocasta. Jocasta could have been super cool, but she was kind of relegated to just being Ultron's tattletale and almost loyal mate. She was built by Ultron to be his mate and bride in a sense, sort of like the story of Frankenstein's bride. At first he had tried to transfer the mind of Janet Van Dyne into Jocasta. This actually succeeded, but just made Janet in Jocasta's robotic body seek to tell the Avengers what was going on and they put a stop to Ultron's madness, reversing the procedure. Jocasta would return a few more times in the comics, but never made much of an impression. She actually could have been a really cool character, but it always feels like she's never really given much of a chance to shine. Still often being resorted to plots where Ultron wants to merge her with Janet, even in the modern day. She was granted Avengers status when she decided to sacrifice herself in order to destroy the evolutionary's base before she died in the process. And Avengers annual issue 17 out of 1988. Number 2 Stingray Dr. Walter Newell was a brilliant oceanographer and engineer who supervised the construction of a domed undersea city with plans to grow food for mankind. The city was attacked by the plunderer, but he was stopped by the Atlanteans Namor, the Submariner, and Lady Dorma, but unfortunately the city was destroyed. Now in response to this, he designed a suit specifically for the deep sea exploration that he named Stingray, as much of the design was based on manta rays. The suit can safely operate in depths of up to 1200 feet, has a unique oxygen diffusion system based on fish gills, grants Newell superhuman strength and durability to handle under water conditions, and is able to swim at high speeds underwater. Now Newell can also glide when not in the water, which is a pretty sweet add-on if I do say so myself. Also should probably mention that the main weapon of the suit is a potent electrical blast, so the name Stingray is definitely fitting. In all honesty, the only reason Stingray was ever an Avenger was because the team needed to use his hydro base as a launch site, when the US government placed airspace restrictions preventing the Avengers from launching Quinjets to downtown Manhattan. Other than that, he really didn't offer much else for the team. Sorry man. Number 1, Dr. Druid. Dr. Druid was Anthony Ludgate, originally a student of psychology and psychiatry who was very much interested in the ancient powers of druids and those of the occult. He wasn't such a bad hero to begin with, but quickly became overshadowed by greater mystic heroes such as Dr. Strange. He also studied under the Ancient One and after some successful heroic pursuits was made an Avenger. However, he became bewitched by Ravona Renslayer and did some pretty awful things, like manipulating the Avengers into making him chairman, usurping Captain Marvel aka Monica Rand Bo, who held the title previously. Following this, he got lost in the time stream and when he returned, used his hypnotism to swindle someone out of their property so he could rent it out to make money and spend his days drinking. Since then, he has died, returned, and become more of a villainous character in the comics with his Avengers membership being revoked. Which makes sense. 
Number 10, Hawkeye. In the MCU's Avengers in 2012, Hawkeye betrayed the Avengers by being brainwashed by Loki. Loki knew that having Hawkeye with him was valuable, and he could access many of the secrets that S.H.I.E.L.D. was hiding. Hawkeye launched an attack on the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier that the Avengers so happened to be on so he could free Loki. He takes out one of the propeller systems on the helicarrier and invades it with his team. Hawkeye and Black Widow fight with her, hoping to free him from the spell. In the end, he is able to fight the spell because Black Widow hit him really, really hard in the head and was able to gain con back control of his own mind. Number 9. Hank Pym. In the Avengers issue 213, Hank Pym received a court martial for how he handled the situation in a fight with the Avengers. He definitely was not in a good place at the time and was a complete wreck. He still wanted to be a part of the Avengers team and wasn't ready to be forced off of it. He decided to design a robot that would attack him during the trial. The catch was that since he designed it, he knew how to easily defeat it. His wife, the Wasp, was completely against Hank doing this, but he didn't care. He told her to keep it a secret, and in the end, the Avengers did find out about the truth about Hank's plan and took him off the team. Number 8, Moondragon. In the comics, Moondragon has very strong mind control abilities, like telepathy and telekinesis. So when she stumbles upon a planet with the people of that planet ready for war, she wants to help them. She doesn't want these people to suffer over what will eventually happen if the war is to start, death. So she decides to control the entire race of people on this planet with her mind control powers to stop fighting. But she didn't just stop there. She went even further and made sure that the people of this planet would even worship her. She even wants to continue to do this throughout the universe. The Avengers find out, she brainwashes Thor to fight them, and she's later defeated and gets a device from Odin that damages her powers to stop her from doing this ever again. Number 7. Sentry. Sentry is one of, if not the most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe. He was recruited by Steve Rogers to be a part of the new Avengers. Unfortunately, Sentry is not fully good. It does in fact have a little dark side of his personality called the Void. In a sense, the Void is the total opposite of Sentry, and regardless of all the good Sentry accomplishes, the Void can quickly undo that with his chaos. Norman Osborn basically manipulated and used Sentry for his own agenda and got him to join the Dark Avengers, where he helped destroy Asgard and kill Loki as the Void. Thor was quite unhappy about this and ended up killing Sentry, but no one stays dead long in the comics and he was later brought back to life. Number 6. Scarlet Witch. In Avengers Disassembled, Scarlet Witch goes crazy, all due to the fact that she really just wanted to have children who were real. But since she was with someone who was artificial, that wasn't really possible. But that didn't stop her from creating them. She used her powers to create the children that she always wanted to have. But what drove her mad was the fact that the children weren't technically real and she couldn't stop thinking about that. She then basically uses her powers to tear the Avengers apart by making their lives complete hell, basically killing Hawkeye. Tony costing the Avengers a deal with the UN because he was drunk while speaking, and Vision getting split in half by She-Hulk. Number 5, Iron Man. Yes, there was even a point during the comics where Tony betrayed the Avengers. Well, sort of, anyways. During the crossing, Tony's brain gets corrupted by Kang the Conqueror. He was trying to control him by making him go crazy. Kang even gets him to frame Hawkeye. Once the Avengers find out, they go back in time to find a younger Tony to help them stop the older Tony. Now, this story was a bit confusing, with some even believing that Tony wasn't as mind controlled as we all believed he was, since in the end, he didn't even seem surprised by anything he found out that he did while working for Kang. Number 4. Namor During the Avengers vs. X-Men series, Namor left the Avengers and went on the side of the X-Men. Now, to be clear, the X-Men were only trying to apprehend the Avengers, but Namor planned something much more evil. And by evil, I mean he found out that the Avengers were in Wakanda and thought that was the perfect plan to take them out would be to drown them with a huge-ass wave. It didn't end up working for Namor and instead only enraged the Wakandans wanting revenge for what he did. From there, Namor and Wakanda became rivals. This rivalry is something that fans have wanted to see be a part of the MCU since the introduction of Wakanda in Black Panther in 2018. Number 3. Hulk In the comics, at one point, Hulk came to the conclusion that the Avengers disliked him and that really irritated the Hulk, which is something that you really don't want to do, especially to the Hulk. He ends up leaving the team and trying to work with Namor to get revenge on them. Apparently, even though Hulk and Namor were working together, they weren't going to stay loyal for long after their plan was complete. In the end, and before the battle was complete, Hulk turned into Bruce Banner and took off and disappeared. Number 2. Black Widow 
So in the comics, Black Widow has turned on the Avengers at one point. Now, in her defense, she was being blackmailed by a weeping lion with the goal to go rogue and turn on S.H.I.E.L.D. During this time, she allowed herself to be brought back to the Avengers Tower by Tony Stark. She only let him take her back there to gain access to his equipment. So she knocked him out and took what she needed. Also, during the MCU Civil War, she also turned on Tony Stark and ended up jumping ship and siding with Captain America. Number one. Captain America. This was a huge shocker at one point in the comic and was a jaw-dropping moment when fans were reading it. The reveal that Captain America was really a Hydra agent all along sent shockwaves through the fan base. How could the Star Spangled Man be evil? He has always proven to do anything he had to to protect his family, team, and his country. It turns out that the Cosmic Cube had altered Steve Rogers' history in a major way, making him this Hydra agent and betraying everything he stood for. It led Rogers to take over America with Zemo, all in the name of Hydra. Desperate to stop this, Ant-Man and the Winter Soldier went into the pocket dimension to find Steve Rogers' consciousness. They were able to use the Cobra to save Steve Rogers' true form. Evil Steve Rogers fought good Steve Rogers in the end, and good prevailed and evil Steve Rogers was defeated by good Steve Rogers wielding Mjolnir in an epic.